So I want to talk about solo capping faction outposts and when the optimal and best time to do it is. A lot of people think the best time to solo cap outposts is whenever the stars here at the very top of the screen are all filled up, and that's not the case. The best time, well, for our case in Bridgewatch, is when our team decides to just draw a long line along the enemy's territory. So what I've done off camera is I've captured one point in Vixen Tor, one point in Kilmar Tor. So when my team comes back and captures these points, I will get credit for capturing the zone without having to entirely be in the entire zone. So now here I am, uh, you know, all the way up here in Bronze Hill now, and I just need to capture one outpost and then leave it be. And then at 30 minutes from now, an hour from now, two hours from now, when my team comes through and captures the rest and then the zone actually does capture, I will then get region capture credit for however many stars are are filled. But because I'm only capturing one zone, it will not be converted. Now, there is a counter to this if the enemy team t decides for whatever reason to just come on down and recapture the outpost back. They get almost no points for that, so there's no reason for them to do that. So they'll just usually leave it, you know, two, two outposts out of three, essentially. And uh, I'll get all the points. Now, as I do this, I tend to gain these little followers, these little people that notice what I'm doing, and then they will join up with me and make it a little bit faster. So the entire thing is not always soloed. Like this guy right here, he's going to dismount now because he sees that I'm more than capable of um, <laughs> basically taking on the faction boss here on my own. He's also going to be giving me heals now, and I, I completed the uh, weekly challenge, or the monthly challenge, actually. Very cool. So we're going to go ahead and capture... I'm just capturing the one outpost, and then I'm going to see what else I can snipe around the map, because if there is nothing else, then I can go gank and PvP and do a bunch of other stuff. I didn't mean to walk into that, but it's fine, because I have a healer now with me. So, uh... And this happens in every zone. All you need is... Uh, I recommend 8.3 for Martlock and 8.4 for Limhurst. Limhurst is very difficult to uh, to actually solo. But uh, the Martlock boss, one of the easiest in the game, I'm using 8.4, Shadowcaller said. I'm using Lifesteal Pork. Uh, roast Pork, rather. There we go. So, capturing that post. And now, I'm going to see if I can go to Saddle Tor. Because Saddle Tor is next to uh, Goffer's Knoll, I should be able to capture it, though it has the sword on it, so maybe not. I might have to wait for Kilmar Tor to be captured. Uh, see, look, they're already starting to capture Vixen Tor, and uh, I, I, since I've already captured one outpost, I'm in the running for this. I count as helping conquer this entire region, so I will get points. And uh, also, make sure whenever you solo cap, always wait until the little NPC spawns, because people will run up from the other factions off screen, and they will cap it right back behind you, and you can do this to the enemy as well. So my next move would be to go to Croker Hill and try to capture one there because right now it uh, looks like Team Bridgewatch is capturing a Drenz. They might go to Blackthorn or they might go to Croker. Now, I got to watch the map and see what they're doing because I want to at least participate. I would really like to have participated here, but I won't make it there in time. Even with the fastest mount in the game, the Snow Husky, and even if I had a cooldown reduction set swap for, uh, you know, spamming the F ability, I still wouldn't make it. So I simply... Can't count on getting points for that one. But uh, this is an insanely huge amount of faction points once you do it for the hour. Because it will count for several hours afterwards depending on how fast or how slow your faction is. Like for the rest of the day, as long as Martlock doesn't come and recapture these single outposts that I've captured, I will get region credit for it. I can, I can log off right now and come back a few days later. Not even a few days later, just maybe a couple hours later, and I will have you know, tons of faction points just waiting for me. But uh, I'm going to go attempt to try to capture one point uh, in the neighboring area. And uh, again, if there's if there's opposition, if there's people guarding the points, obviously you can't solo them, depending on their gear. Uh, a lot of times, it's just some like 5-1 shitter that will dismount, and then I just throw a puddle under them, and then they just melt immediately. So I don't really have to worry about that too much. You could use a more offensive build like Battle Axe if you want to be able to fight the enemies and... Uh, the outpost boss. I wouldn't recommend fighting anyone when you're doing Limhurst because that one requires very strategic positioning. But uh, I'm just going to run up capture outpost 2 right quick and uh, we're going to see. Just, uh, uh, let's see. So they've captured a Drenz. They if, they, if they come here, I can go to outpost 3 instead. Just hit the enemy one time. I don't have to do anything. Let the, let the blob capture it. And, uh, but I'm not going to count on the blob. I'm not going to assume that they're coming to outpost 3. I'm just going to start. Start clearing here. Go, start heals, and try to 
target the champion of Martlock, wait for his spell. Usually the line spell cut up here shortly. Nope, it's the AoE. Now I can do the laser beam. And, uh, I, you know, I think I've, I've made a few videos already on the rotations of the uh, outpost bosses and what to do and how to dodge their attacks. They're very simple. Simply do not stand in any of their attacks. That's all you have to do. Every time he casts the little three, you know, expanding earth ground attack, he always puts a circle under you. It's, uh, it's pretty basic, pretty simple stuff. So I'm going to go over here, wait for him to cast the circle under me, walk out of the way of his line attack, and then uh, laser beam when he's in the puddle. And I will out-sustain him, I will out-DPS him every time. And look, someone showed up. Here we go, they always show up. And that's fine because I'm getting, you know, the same amount of points regardless since I've done the majority of the damage. This build out DPSs everything in the game. I don't have to worry about anything coming up and out DPSing it except a awakened one-handed dagger. But I have more sustain. Like, he has burst, I have sustain. And, uh, yeah, he's an 8-4 sword user, so, uh, I'm not joining your party, dude. But there we go. We captured this point, and you can see the blob is over there on point 3. Uh, I can simply, after this is captured, I can move on. And let's see, they are not going to Blackthorn. Blackthorn is right outside Martlock. I do not recommend trying to solo cap that. You will get ganked. This has a sword on it. Can't capture, can't capture that. Uh, looks like uh, Bridgewatch is now capturing this one. Can't capture that. And uh, yeah, that's still taking some time. Now, what else can we do on the map? There's Flat River Trough, which is currently being captured. So I can travel, uh, let's see, one, two. I can make that in time. I can get to Flat River and help capture that. Uh, the, I can go all the way down here to Steelhide Meadow and solo capture that, along with Dry Field. Maybe touch what I can't make Willow Woods in time, there's no way. So I'm gonna go now to that area and, uh, capture it. Also, funny in the chat, this guy is bitching about it. Um, I, I am K solo capping all these Marlock maps. This other party is just capping one. I hope you don't get any points, but you will. Like, why, why does he care if we get points or not? So, uh, it looks like someone's attacking outpost number one. I just need to hit the enemy once, and as long as they don't de-aggro or reset, I get full credit for that cap, so I don't need to waste time and resources solo capping too. Yes, it helps my faction. However, if there's already, you know, a faction here working on capping outposts, let them do all the work because I'm better off ganking enemy players, which will give me more points over time. And I keep hiccuping because I just drank a bunch of water. So let's uh, get in here and uh, yeah, there's a small little party fighting. So just hit it a few times. There we go. We put some curse tax on it and, um, and I'm, I'm good to go. I don't have to stay and fight unless I assume that these guys are going to lose. They, I don't know if they have a... This guy's about to die. The, the archer's about to die. They have no healer. This 8-4 swordsman, he's going to finish it off just fine. Uh, they don't need me. They will be able to cap it without me. Let's move on. We got a strategic. So that's getting capped. That's going to get capped. That's going to get capped. I can't touch those two. Uh, Croker Hill, we touched that, I believe. Yes, so we're good. The entire Marlock area has been solo touched. I can go safely gank players now, which means I could just swap sets if I want. If I want to go gank a red that's totally fine or i can work on soloing a group dungeon if i want outpost capture that puts me in the running for the region i'm gonna go switch sets and maybe go attack limhurst for a while until they start capping back because what tends to happen is when i just start ganking limhurst they tell their friends and they start blobbing up and then they start pushing the outposts which is what i want them to do so that we can solo cap them back at a later date so let's go do that so if you're wondering why I'm choosing to go gank Limhurst players instead of ganking Martlock players, and there's a few reasons. There's a whole heck of a lot more Limhurst players than there are Martlock players, and the Limhurst players are lesser geared, and they're not as good at the game. A lot of them have ping disadvantages, so that makes it easier on me. All in all, it's there's just more targets and easier targets when ganking around Limhurst than when ganking around Martlock, whereas Martlock is easier to solo cap, and, uh, yeah, so let's go hunt some players down. You'll also notice I changed my build a bit. I've got Bear Paws on now. I've switched to Royal Sandals. I've got the uh, Elite Terror Bird. This is for the speed buff, chasing down enemy mounts. This is by far the best build in the, in the whole game to dismount players, which a lot of people are going to be mounted. Bonus points if I catch someone doing transports not on a bear. That's just free silver. Of course, I'm going to take it. Now you'll see, I just got region capture points, and then I just got faction, uh, well this shows earned faction defense of the land points, this shows the region capture points, which will put me back in the running for the defense of the land points, 
because you get defense of the land points every 15 minutes on the dot four times per hour. Now, this is a huge mistake right here. You see this guy? Uh, he is saying that um, they're massing for faction wars in yellow zone, and um, that's not how you get a lot of points. The best way to get a lot of points is actually to join my Discord where we do guerrilla warfare. We do not fight blobs head on. We don't have bomb squads or any of that crap. We solo cap outposts or we duo cap outposts. We do a lot of hidden runs. Just a few of us can completely stall out an entire enemy faction blob, assuming they have no organization. Let, let the slaves be the slaves. Let the simple-minded ants and insects follow the herd. Let the sheep be sheep. Join our Discord. There is no gear checks unless you want an elite rank, and it's just for funsies. It doesn't really make a difference. There is, um, now there's people attacking this. Oh wait, I can actually maybe run and get the tag for that real quick so I can get credit. So I'm going to use my mount's uh, little dashy ability here just to get a hit in. And if, here's another thing too. If you manage to show up to these outposts and they've already killed the boss, just stand in the middle and, and help cap it. All right, but in this case, if I can walk through the damn wall, just hit, just hit the mob a few times. Get your get your weapon tag on it. There we go. I did some damage to the mob. I now count as capping that outpost. I don't have to stick around and go kill mobs. I can go back on my mission for solo ganking. And uh, but like I was saying, join our Discord. We are you don't have, it's not a guild. You don't have to leave your guild or anything. There is no questionnaire to get into that part of the server. You simply have to be able to show your current gear set. And there is no gear requirements, okay? If you're in flat 4-1 and you want to, you know, dick around with faction warfare, then join us! We're, we're not going to blob up. We're not going to have a shot caller. We don't do gear checks. We don't do anything of the sort. Now, this one is actually being attacked by uh, green players. Possibly, maybe someone just rode near it. I'm going to go investigate because that's a free kill. If it's just a few people, I can run in there with the assistance of uh, whoever... <laughs> of, uh, you know, the boss. Yeah, there's the guards aren't even disturbed, so we can just leave that alone. But what I'm trying to say is that unlike these other discords that had these stupid rule sets where you can't loot people and you're not allowed to use Cleric Cow, we don't have any of that shit. Fuck the rules, join us, and you'll have way more fun. Now, this zone right here is usually flooded with Limhurst players because it is a step zone near their territory, which means if they want to skin animals and not have to ride five or six zones out, they come here to skin for whatever reason. So I always, oh, there's one right now. I'm gonna show you what I do, I'm gonna go off screen. Now he mounted, and he's a beefy boy. I'm gonna wait for him to dismount and I'm gonna mount off my screen just like this, see, watch. I, I, he can't see me, but he can hear me. I'm gonna run at him with full force and try to dismount him now. There we go, and got him, all right. And he's probably still gonna be able to escape, that's fine. But, you know, we dealt, we dealt a ton of... Oh, is he fighting? He is... He fought, and he lost. So that is one gank, 562 points, because I have premium active. Otherwise, it's like 300-something. Now, I just want to mention, just ganking that one guy is going to give me maximum defense of the land points for this region. And, um, yeah, it, it's... that that I don't have to gank anyone else for the next, like, 10 minutes if I don't want to. But... If a lot of other people are currently active on the server, because it is a weekend, if this was a weekday on a school day, then I would be good. But because it's a weekend and other people are also ganking and playing and contributing, I am in competition with them. Uh, so, because I captured a bunch of solo outposts earlier and I did a solo gank, because uh, uh, the way it works is if, if you're with like a zerg of 50 people and you, uh, you get credit for killing someone like that, you're sharing that kill credit with 50 people. Whereas I ganked it solo, so I'm technically contributing more to the war effort than those 50 are, even though we did the same thing. So it puts me higher up in the running for defense of the land points, which um, the more people active, there's only so many points to give out, regardless of how active you actually are. And I'm going to get closer to Limhurst because I can find more uh, red name players easier. But the more you do, the more you can... Ooh, there's a chest. That's super gankable. A lot of greens will swarm that, and I could jump in down a bunch and run away. Region capture. Hey, remember that? Uh, that That's still Martlock, you know, getting their zones capped. So, again, I'm, I'm, I guarantee you, with, with what I've done right now, I am at the top of the defense of the land running. Even though I'm not in a zerg, I'm not in a big guild, I'm not in a massive organized unit, and there, even if there was bandit event... Alright, uh, I have other tricks that I, I've taught members only on this channel how to 
farm bandit events without ever going into a red zone. That's right. You can get credit for bandit events. I don't know if it's a bug. I don't think it's a bug. I think it's intended, the, the way the game's coded. You can get credit for bandit events without ever entering a red zone. And uh, for now, that's channel member secret only, but uh, I might publish that in the future, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. All right, so I'm gonna teach you how to possibly stop a small party. Oops, we got, a, we got a little solo guy out here caught with his pants down. I should be able to dismount this. Even if he reacts in time, he's possibly a bot. Maybe. It's hard to tell sometimes. I don't want to waste all my cooldowns. Not just yet. Well, I'm going to have to waste my boots, I guess. And, uh, oh, we got a player here that might try to steal the kill. Nope. Okay, I got it. Uh, but I was going to show you how to stop a small party, possibly. And what you always want to do, you have to scout the fight. You have to make sure there is not a healer at any of these events. If there is a small party attacking an outpost, Ridgewatch is the best. Yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> then, um... You can't do it. If the, if oh that's that person's low. Scout everybody. All right. So we got a bow, bow. Like this is like I can just gank these dudes now. They're dead. Like they have no heals. Uh, this guy is that's the healer. So take him out first. And uh, <laughs> yeah, healer's down. And then we stop. You know the bow guy here, which uh, I failed to hit. But hey, that's fine. So that's one down. This will be two. There's a third guy on his mount for some reason. And I don't have... Oh, he dismounted on me. Like, see, he, he didn't scout me first. So... <laughs> oh, man. And, yep. Um, a little too strong for you, buddy. Sopa man. Tier 7 flat. Double swords. Now, if I get in trouble, I can run to the outpost. And that's, uh, that's a good little way to defend. As a Bear Paws user, I can use my run ability uh, while attacking. Nope, you don't get to mount up, buddy. Sorry. Oh, also, this guy got too close, and, uh, yeah, he's... Look, this is a full team wipe. This is a freaking full team wipe. And now that hit a little hard, but I have the faction boss here, you know, helping me out a little bit. I get my 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 W back. Oh, he's meditating. Well, I'm a great axe, so I just n neutralized all your heals, buddy. And, yeah, he's, he's not that geared. So that was a full team wipe. That's a lot of points. It also, the game knows I'm defending the outpost when I did this. So that that just maxed out my running right there. I'm I guarantee you I am the most uh, I am pulling the most weight right now on Bridge Watch. That couldn't have been more perfect. That doesn't always happen though, but just watch out for it. When you're in enemy territory, they think they're safe. You know they're they're in here trying to you know quickly knock down an outpost. If they don't have a healer or their healer is very low geared, you can jump and kill everybody. So we just earned nine thousand six hundred sixty eight uh, faction defense points of the land. This is being attacked again. Scout it first. And then we engage. So let's see. We got a bear paws, a fucking 4-4 healer. This guy is heavily wounded. I can jump these two. I can definitely jump these two. He's They're going to run. So let's get the guy that's wounded first. Just take him out. There we go. We took him out. This will reset the uh, champion boss here. They got him down to half. And uh, this one just died naturally to the enemies, I guess. I didn't get a tag. So we got one kill there. Not too bad. Now, when tailing someone, you need to wait until they get hit by a mob in order to dismount and then chase them on your own. And this only works for Bridge Watch because we have that run speed bonus from our mount's ability. So we need to wait until something hits him. I aggroed that boar on axis, so don't run ahead. Just try to stay right behind him so they aggro and get slapped by something. Anything. Now, this guy could also be radioing for backup, and he also has an out right here at the top. He might be going tor towards it, so he, he might zone. But there, there it is. If he if this wasn't here, I would have dismounted immediately. So we're going to follow him for a bit. We might as well follow him. And, uh, oh, we, what is that? What the hell is that? Why is he naked? Oh, he just put his gear on. What the hell are you doing, buddy? What is he doing? He wants to fight. That's weird. This sound, this looks like a setup. I don't know, man. But, uh... <laughs> He might get his buddy here to dismount, and it, he did. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I think it's kind of funny. I'm just going to laser them both here. Yeah, this is this is basically free, but that's because I, I have a huge gear advantage. And uh, I could I might as well chase this guy. I've already killed him a few times, so he's not worth that many points. That's another thing when ganking, is once you've killed the same guy a few times, there's no reason to, to continue, really. That was an enemy on my bottom left. All right, let's use my W and use it properly here. Now, I'm hitting the enemy. Oh, he thinks he's safe. He might actually be. 
because I'm a little low on health. Jump coming in here is dangerous, and he's healing. Look at his heal factor. Laser the fuck out of him. That way he doesn't get that heal factor. He tried to run. Now I have boots. I'm safe. We're good. I'm going to take a lot of hits, though, but if, <laughs> if another red saw me and dismounted on me, I would be dead here. But hey, you know, nice little 2v1. And again, I'm using full 8-4 because if I don't, I wouldn't be able to take these fights. I wouldn't be able to be this this wild and crazy. Now, that's going to show up. That's going to be a little honeypot for the rest of the zone, which they're going to come check that out and maybe look for some free points. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Now, solo ganking is great, but blob ganking is even better. But I can't tell if there's a blob, but I can assume there's a blob because when I look on the map, where's the action? Karns Hill is under attack. That's not really too far from Ridgewatch. It's uh, it's like three or four zones away. By the time I get there, they will have capped these two, and they will have moved on to Falkness, possibly beeline it to Flat River. I, def I definitely would rather bomb a blob than to solo gank, because it's more fun, it's more profitable, it's a little more risky with repair bills, but there's, a, there's not a lot of people out here right now, and, uh, you know, I'm still getting plenty of points. Also, hey, nice boss. I'll take it. You know, it's a yellow zone boss. I got my satchel. It's fine, right? They're going to get a bunch of little, fa little fame for this. I think it's maybe 120,000. I, I don't remember. 57,000. Okay, not as much. Whatever. But uh, it's still good. It's still good. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go look for a few more targets. I'm going to let Marlock push a little bit closer to Bridgewatch before I, you know, teleport home and then swap to a bomber set. And while I wait for that blob to get closer to Bridgewatch, I'm going to check this little area. Now, this circle right here, that is a heart transport mission objective zone. And um, there are people that do heart transports through here a lot and often. And if I could... Oh, there's a region capture. 4.6 thousand points. Remember, I, I did that nearly half an hour, more like 40, 45 minutes ago. I haven't captured a region in a long time. I'm still getting credit for it. And uh, a lot of credit, mind you. And all I did was capture one little outpost with my little simple soloing set all by myself. Isn't it great? So we're, we're out here now. I'm gonna see if I can, uh, you know, just poach a few heart transports. Right now, it's only eight in the morning, UTC. We got a, we got someone moving there. I'm immediately dismounting to see if I can catch them. I don't know where they're going or which direction they're headed. Yeah, there's no one there. That's fine though. But uh, oh, we got creative QQ here. Let's see if I can get them. And there's Bobbert01. Get him. Oh, is he AFK? What's what you doing, buddy? Can I don't think I can get him in time. No, he's. I did not root him. Where is it? What the heck is he doing? <laughs> He's playing Ring Around the Rosie with me. Alright, this guy's not very geared, so I'm just gonna chop him up. And, uh... <laughs> uh what's he doing? We're trying to get transports. That's what we're trying to do. And uh, Creative QQ is not doing a transport. I don't know what he's doing, but he's got shield. There's no reason to chase this dude. Well, actually, if he just sits there... He, does he? Is he overestimating his shield? I think he is. Check this out. Oh, oh, did I, I got the bleed on him. That counts. No, laser. Oh, we got the dismount, though. So let him run. Let him run. Let the bleeds run out. That's fine, because I get my mount in seven seconds. He doesn't get his for about 23 more seconds. So as long as I don't get put in combat by anything or anyone, I can just catch him. Watch. This is real simple. This is real easy. This is another reason to go bridge watch. Also, he's going to the outpost, and he is a healer, so it's a problem. It's not going to be a problem too long, though. So we're going to run up to him, and look how much ground he covered. Now, he is going to fight. That's fine. I got my, I got all my cooldowns. It's time to rumble. And, uh, yeah, he's he's literally no, no contest, right? So I can just leave now. We killed him. It alerts the zone that this is under attack, so I don't want to stay, even though the, that Bobbert guy is attacking me. And uh, gotta, you gotta leash the final guard. They take, they have a long ass range. But there we go, and uh, easy gank. Now we want to get the heart transport, so we want to patrol this road here. That uh, this road right here that leads to U Wood, because U Wood is right outside of Limhurst. And uh, we want to just kind of be right around here because this is where the heart transports go for, uh, well, not only for Care Leone, but also when they're transporting to Bridgewatch. So, we're going to post up maybe about here. I mean, so I, I, I want to go a little deeper. So, no one's shielded, and it's a little bit harder to see my nameplate and stuff. I think right here is good. I'm also checking that blob. Okay, they took Adrin's Hill. Are they going... They took Karn's Hill. Where are they going next? None of these are under attack yet, so I don't know where they're going. But 
We want them to be lying closer to bridge watch or near, just somewhere near. But now we just chill. We just chill for a bit. It's cool. And uh, this is where you would turn your volume up, by the way. And so that way you can hear people. Like this guy, this little flat plate user. Ooh, gross. What the heck, dude? Why's he got? Why's he got a courier back? Maybe he's transporting. He might be transporting. Now that's a red zone target right there. He's probably bringing some stone to Care Leon to flip. Not a bad idea. Actually, good money doing that. All right, and this could take a while. Sometimes you don't get transports. You just get reds kind of traveling through the area. This guy just gave up life whenever I dismounted him. But um, I don't usually check to see if they're transporting before I attack. I just chase the hell out of them and then dismount them and kill them. Because even if they aren't doing a transport, they're still worth faction points. You still get defense of the land points. You might as well kill them anyway. They're the bad guys. And uh, I realize that I'm a little high up because they're approaching. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, man. Let's see if we can catch him. Now, he's a little far. And he is not transporting. He is just a gatherer or something. But uh, we managed to hit him a few times. Try to... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, he's too far. So, that's a, that's a fail. But essentially, you know, that could have been a kill. You know, more points. More points never hurts. But we are on... Basically, everything's on cooldown at the moment. Uh, for, for oxes, they're a bit harder to dismount. But you can do it if you manage to get on top of them with all of your cooldowns active. Anyway, uh, right now, this... They're attacking Felkness Hill, which is three zones away. And I can get there in time, so I'm gonna go bomb it. And there we go, we got another Faction Defense of the Land, 6,184 points. Now, these points are much higher on the weekdays when there are less people playing. I mean, you can get a whole lot more it, it, very easily. So, but because it's the weekend and I didn't want to wait to film this, it's, it's whatever, it's still a lot of points. So before we get to the bombing, let me show you how it's going to work. I took off the bag because I don't want a repair bill on the bag. We got Invis Pot, we got 8.1 Beef Stew. Miners, Worker Boots, this is how we run away. The Brazilian Cape, you could use Caroleon for more damage, but I don't generally need it. Uh, what this does is it gives me a, a shield when I use my boots, and it lets me not be purged when I use my boots. Because if I use boots and they purge me, I'm basically dead. Uh, assassin Jacket, so we can stack some damage and be invis. And Royal Helmet, because uh, our Witch Work Staff will group them all up in a black hole, suck them all towards the middle. This barrel will land on their heads, stunning and damaging them all, letting me just free cast on them. And that's all there is to it. So let's get to the, the area where the blob is at. So this is the zone that's under attack. As you can see, it's uh, uh, base number four. We can see the blob on the map. If you don't see the blob on the map, it is a small coordinated team, and this usually does not work too well. Uh, but what you generally want is a very small blob or a very large blob. A medium blob like this is not really ideal. You generally want to let it grow more before you attack it because it's worth more. But uh, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to attack it now instead of letting it get bigger and let them capture zones. So what I want to do is I want to approach from off screen, preferably from the bottom, if I can. If not, it's fine. I don't want to get too close. I don't want them to see my name because I'm a known bomber. So this is fine. I'm going to use my dismount spell and I'm going to... Okay, they just captured it. So I'm going to count from 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000... I can't get there in time. This guy might dismount on me. I don't have mounts. But um, the time from it, when it captures, you have 13 Mississippis or 1,000s to jump on the point before their boss spawns on top of it. All right, let's try to bomb them again, but they know I'm coming this time. They, they are ready. They are paranoid. They've been bombed a few times now. And, you know, let's see. Let's get a nice little group of them right in here. And boom! <laughs> See you later, and watch them chase me, and they, they're gonna try to purge, and man, they're quick. So, this, see this guy chasing me on his mount? You can, you can counter this, because by the time I can mount up, he can't dismount and attack me because of the cooldown. So there we go, we just got away. Easy kills, how many kills did I get there? I would scroll up, one, two, three, four, five, six! Six kills, easy. And yes, it does cost an invis potion, but hey, you, you want to know a little secret? Okay, if you want to save money on invis potions, just be a max level potion crafter. Except for these new potions. I don't have anything in those yet. But hey, that's more than enough. Also, we could maybe back cap that. Wait, it just said outpost three captured, but it's it's mar it's still bridge watch. I know there's a um <laughs> there's a guy that's helping back cap now. Uh so I'm gonna go see if he's if he's fighting. And no. No, he's not. He's what is going on? Oh, they, it, they, no, that was an alert that um, that it got attacked because I guess they ran to chase this dude. 
Yeah, he's trying to back cap too. So there we go. You know, we're we're out here doing guerrilla tactics on Martlock. It's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, in 50 seconds, I can do another bombing run and kill another six people. It it never ends. They will get super demoralized after a while, and they will just stop. Their blob will disband. That's why I wait until their blob is insanely big because six kills. It's not a lot. When you get like 20 or 30 <laughs> or hell, it was like one time it was like 45 kills, bro. That's when you really want to do it. Also, if they're tanks and healers and, uh, you know, initiative, initiate DPS are all following you around and stuff, then uh, also my beef stew ran out. Then that's that's good. That's good for, for bridge watch, right? Because uh, it's, it means they're capping extra slow. Time to eat another beef stew and, you know, we got 10 seconds to get back in there. Let's go. So they totally see me, dude. He knows. They know I'm here. All right. So they just capped. One. Let's see. Let's see if how many leave. There's not much I can do here. I want to get this clocky guy. Uh, yeah, that didn't kill. And uh, again, they're not gonna be able to catch me. <laughs> they can't purge. Like this guy. This guy mounted again. He cannot catch me. So there we go, wait for my boots to run up, and they're gonna dismount, that's fine. I will be mounted by the time they can attack, see? And then I can just do this, and I immune whatever attack they may have, may have had, if they're like a bear paws user, you know, and they blow their boots and cooldowns, they will still, they will never ever be able to get me. And that's the funniest thing, because I can bomb them indefinitely, as long as I have invis potions. Without invis potions, you gotta get closer and hope they don't pay attention, but... Otherwise, it's just it's just free points. Here's another fun thing I can also do, right? So they just captured that previous zone. They just captured Felton's Hill. It's not worth much right now. But what I can do is once they start capping Redstone Plain, well, look at Bridgewatch. We have the whole area wrapped around. I Once they start capping this, I switch to my solo set, and I just start capping this again, and then it closes behind them, and they're forced to retreat. <laughs> he says try harder. Bro, like, <laughs> I'm doing my best here. Oh man, it's too funny, it's too many points, it's too damn good. Now I will say, if you're just trying to maximize points, you only need to bomb the blob one time every 15 minutes. You don't need to continuously bomb them unless you want to. There's no reason to do it, it's just for fun at this point. And if you don't like the thrill of running from them, if you don't like the whole repair build thing, because there will be times when the tanks are literally on point and have insane reaction time, and they jump your ass and hold you down, and then they just blow you up. And you will get a repair bill. Wearing a set like this is like 200k or something. It's pretty big. So what you need to do is have a different bombing set. There's so many different bombing sets. There's so many different little sets you can use to uh, to harass them. It's not really harassment, okay? But it, it's like, uh, you know, to, to <laughs> what's the word? To outplay them at the faction game. There, there's so many different ones. Glacial Staff is really good because you can cast it and you can just walk away. And by the time you're mounted up and half the map away, your uh, your Glacial Staff area of effect will be slowly crawling its way towards them and tickling their health bars down. And there are so many people that uh, they get downed by Glacial Staff. It's so funny. It's it's the fun Oh, look, Faction Defense. 12,000 points for Faction Defense. Let's see, right there, 12,969 faction defense points. Again, <laughs> that was like one bombing, okay? We just bombed one little blob of people, 12,000 points, plus all the points we got for bombing them. So the Glacial Staff, here's how I tend to do it, is I play very passively. I charge up the Assassin Jacket to 100%, or 10 stacks rather, and then I just, I just cast uh, Ice Storm, and then I just run away. Or sometimes I don't even run away, I just blink away, or I just remount. It really depends on how passive or aggressive the enemy blob is. Because this blob we've been attacking is, it's kind of small. This is not an effective weapon at all to use. As a matter of fact, uh, you should only say this for really big blobs. Or for when the bridge watch blob clashes with the enemy team. That means when there are people fighting, especially at chokes. You cast this at a choke, their tank initiates and half their enemy team walks into an ice storm they didn't want and they just melt. This weapon melts enemies super duper quick, and whoa, what is that guy doing? That is a weird 8-4 Avalonian bow from Ford Sterling all the way out here in Bridgewatch. What the heck? Uh, so anyway, Redstone was being attacked, and uh, Outpost 1 was actually being attacked, and now they're gone. So they, they might have backed off. They might be attacking something else. Okay, they're attacking Croker. So that's a little bit of ways away. Now sometimes you'll just come across players who are unfortunately in bad situations like this guy. 
And uh, I'm just going to chase him. I mean, what's he going to do? He might be able to run away and mount up, I guess. Maybe. Oh, he's trying. He's on a donkey! Oh, the poor dude! Now, my 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 E spell can't fight this dude, but he's so undergeared. And it's a 2v1. I, you know, we got him. It's just free points. We might as well. <laughs> I mean, he's this little 4 1 bear paw guy. Uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, man. There's a chest there. This weapon is so fun for, against chests. I will. I, I just I just want to show you when when people start capping this, even if they aren't bridge watch flag. Oh man, they will sit there and they will get hit by the ice storm and not move and die. It's the funniest thing, especially when you cast it from stealth. Oh, this weapon. It, this weapon is too fun sometimes for these exact things. Now, my favorite weapon for just killing faction players on uh, on these chests is actually the energy shaper because everyone stacks up. Like, if this was deeper into Marlock territory, it would be all blues. It would be all blues. And, um... <laughs> oh, man. And they all stack up on top of each other. You just laser them down, like, in two seconds with the Energy Shaper. And they all melt. You run up and collect the chest. It's the greatest thing ever. And, man, this guy has the, a similar name to a dude that sold me an 8-4... Um, that's interesting. An 8-4 Death Givers that was Awakened. I think it might be the same guy, actually. Yeah. I think he sold me the 8-4 Death Gears. He's out here in, like, Tier 3 stuff. All right, let's scout it out. We got one blue. What's he geared with? Oh, it's the same dude. Really? Like, I don't even need to, like, be sneaky about it. Now, this person's a little more hard to fight. That's fine. But, you know, me and this other dude here, this is our chest. We're going to grab it. And uh, unless he dismounts, if he dismounts, I will cast Ice Magic on him. And go for it, dude. I mean, you brought this on yourself, bro. Like, I'm an 8-4. Oh, no. Oh, no, you're... <laughs> yeah, you can you can leave now, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my helmet so I can get my E spell back. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All mine, I guess. It's probably not gonna be worth that much anyway, but let's see. 100k, I think? I don't know. I didn't really look in time. All right, so... No one was here to blob on the chest because, again, it's 8 in the morning. There's not a lot of people awake yet. So, one cool thing about Glacial Staff is that... Uh, you can use an Assassin Hood here to get your cooldowns back, but you can also use this spell, the Glacial Obelisk. You just cast it on yourself, and that will uh, speed up your cooldowns, which speeds up your helmet cooldowns, so you can use your helmet. And, uh, yeah, it just makes things way, way faster. So we can dramatically reduce our bo boots cooldown timer. And, uh, yeah, just sit here and spam this on ourselves a few times, and we'll get our boots back much faster, allowing us to, again, bomb the little faction that's up here. You know, ready and waiting, of course. <laughs> All right, one more R to do it. So we're going to cast another W here, and then another helmet, and then we got our boots back. So we can now swap our skill to blink, and we're ready to bomb. We just need to, uh... again, you don't have to use an invis pot to approach. You can just simply run at them from off screen, cast your E, and then run the hell away. That works totally fine. I'm going to get within nameplate viewing range right there. So they, again, they could maybe see this. That's fine. It's fine. We're just going to run up now and invis jacket and kind of wait for those 10 charges. They're going to be like, what the hell's going on? And I'm going to cast right in here. And man, that's going to melt some health bars, maybe. And these guys are going to dismount. They're going to dismount on me. That's fine. There we go. We got chained for some reason. So I'm just going to run up here. I'm going to run this way. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're going to chase me around. That's fine. And I'm going to A up right here. They're going to dismount. They don't have time to attack me. It's fine. It's totally fine. And uh, I don't think we killed anybody because they're kind of geared. Look at this guy attacking me from the, the cliff side, man. What's going on with that? But uh, we can check the combat log. Now, if the blob's bigger and it wasn't actively capping, then, uh, like, if they're in the middle of a big fight, it really gets confusing. But, again, they're... They're, uh... They're not so... They're, they're not so clumped right now. So, again, this is not the best bomber weapon for this size of blob. But it, it's still pretty damn good. It's really annoying for them, too. And there we go. Even though we did not get kills from bombing, we still tickled a bunch of enemies, giving us 5.3 thousand points. Again, all we're doing is just attacking them. And if other people see you doing this, if you got some friends, they can come in and bomb with you. And eventually, when Bridge Launch does catch up uh, to what's going on, uh, you will have attacked all of these enemies, therefore flagging as, you know, being a combatant. And when they eventually do die... Uh, yeah, so there's their nameplates. I'm gonna... Let's see. Yeah, I got my boots up. I'm going to go ahead and dismount here. And we're going to charge up our assassin jacket. 
just like that. And boy, they're all like right there. I, oh, I walked too far. Crap. All right, let's go ahead and start casting. And uh, I'll see you later. They might purge here because uh, I didn't blink. I forgot to blink. Now, you look at my look at my mount's cooldown. This is where it's bad because it keeps ticking at 10. I can't mount up. I got a kill. I just killed somebody. <laughs> okay, we're at 7 seconds. Really shouldn't have blinked there, but whatever. 3 seconds. So, as long as no one gets hit by the ice storm, we can remount. And uh, there we go. We didn't we, we, we didn't use an invis pot on that. Remember, I can still invis pot juke away from these guys. Uh, which makes it really hard for them to follow. And then I can blink and... And basically just rinse and repeat, right? So now, we just chill and get our cooldowns back and we rinse and repeat. We keep doing this, we keep following the blob. Also, if they leave the point early, we could try to fight it. But as Glacial, it's kind of hard to 1v1 people, because it's kind of a... It's like an iffy build. And, oh, see, they're already moving. There we go, get our cooldowns back. Uh, so they're attacking point two and one. So one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1, oh, there's only one guy, and he's gonna fight, and he is a healer, okay, whatever, here, so, I don't know exactly how to fight this, but, uh, <laughs> let's get our cooldowns back again, uh, yeah, this might be an infinite fight, because I don't have any kind of burst potential, but, uh, uh, also, I think I might go out of mana. <laughs> but hey, you know, maybe I just charge my E up. <laughs> oh yeah, see, there comes his friend. Okay, yeah, we got we got to bounce out of here. So, uh, I was able to delay it though, at least. Nah, bro, you can't catch me, dog. <laughs> you can use all your movement skills. It ain't gonna work. And nameplate off the screen. That's time to mount up. Unfortunately, uh, by the time I run back now, the uh, the guardian will be. See, yeah, they see had another friend too. These guys are in Discord together. Uh, yeah, see, there's the boss, and I can't solo it with this build. So, but we we got close. Okay, if that healer hadn't stuck behind for whatever reason, that would have been a free back cap. <laughs> All right, let's attempt another bombing. This time again, no invis pot. Just uh, hit that invis jacket. Let it charge to ten. There we go. We got 10 stacks. Get in there, boyos. And cast. Cast away. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave. Oops. I don't have my blink active as a skill. They're still gonna chase. I got boots. I'm way, way too far away from them to purge. <laughs> Is he really still chasing? I. There we go. He went in viz or he's out of range. So, uh, again, I don't know how many tags I got from that. I don't think a lot because my amount wasn't on long cooldown. But, uh... You know, I can attempt again very shortly here. I can just keep casting spells at them. And uh, maybe from a different angle this time. It was kind of a weird angle. I don't like approaching from the top or from the sides. I like to approach from the bottom. All right, 1 1,000. Let's try back cap. 3 1,000. 4 1,000. 5 1,000. 6 1,000. 7 1,000. 8 1,000. 9 1,000. 10 1,000. 11 1,000. 12 1,000. 13 1,000. Again, the healer stuck around. He's going to summon his friends again. That's fine. Just let him do it. And... I mean, he can't really hurt me, right? If I could freeze him in the circle, I could do a bunch of damage. <laughs> but I don't... I don't have the right Q spell. I think maybe with the right Q spell, I could maybe do, deal some damage here. But again, he's just gonna call his friends. So this is just delaying it. Yep, here comes his friend. It, it's just kind of fun to pester him. Now, that's a Shadow Caller. I'm out. See ya. See ya, Mr. Shadow Caller. <laughs> Oh boy, you know, you can just sit here and do this all night long, or I could have brought a swap set, because if continuously it's just the damn healer, I could just bring like a, like a 4-3 dagger, or I'm sorry, an 8-4 dagger and just stab him, and he's just dead, nothing he could do, right, ah uh, man, I want to try to bomb this chest, because they, they might go for it, that whole blob might be going for it. So I can tell this is an organized discord, like, attack, because they're splitting the two different outposts, by assaulting them so they're thinning their numbers so I can't just sit there and farm them all night by bombing them over and over and that's totally fine also they're pretty privy to me uh casting glacial staff all over them so it's uh you know it, it's been fun for a bit but um oh they uh did they run away he's like all the way over here what the frick yeah, he's, he's out here so oh it's a solo shadow call he's doing the same thing that I'm doing right and, uh, yeah, he's, uh, that's definitely what's speeding them up. See, that's the importance of having those Shadow Callers on your team. 
he is, uh, he's speed capping essentially. And, uh, you know, that's what I did earlier. You know, us shadow callers, we got everything in mind. And I want to get everyone onto the bridge watch side, damn it. Join up, the, join the damn Discord. Let's get this stuff rolling. So for just the recording tonight, it looks like I made about 54,000 faction points. It's not a whole lot because it's the weekend. I normally make way, way more just doing one little rotation what I showed tonight. But, uh, you know, there's not really too much going on. Uh, Limhurst is starting to push into Long Shadow here shortly, it looks like. Uh, I could I could solo cap Steelhide, Dry Field. I would, I would, this is just one outpost, so you cap this, you get the whole zone. You know, cap two of those, you can let it slow cap if you want. I can also, um, right now it looks like, you know, they're here, they're probably gonna, they're pushing Bronze. So what this means is I can circle around and start, you know, cap one in, in, uh, in Karns, cap one in Felkness, because these will be touching Orange. Or I can just full cap cards if I want, and then I can cap all three of these zones at least one. Now, Adrenus Hill's a little harder to, to cap because that's pretty close to Martlock, so you gotta be careful. But, uh, yeah, I could do it if I want to, but I'm gonna take a little break. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Also, from this chest, 163k, that's, that's a pretty good amount. Uh, with that said, let me know what you think. Leave a like on the video because everyone that doesn't play Bridgewatch will be disliking the video. So please help me out with that. Also, um... I don't know, click the video on the right side of the screen. If you don't, you're going to be questioning your farts for the next week and uh, checking for messes.